this. Let's assume we have two cars. Let's assume we have a car here that is 2,000 kilograms moving at 35 meters per second. So we have one car that's moving in this dimension that is moving at 35 meters per second. Down here, we're going to have another car. And this car is going to be one, or sorry, 1,500 kilograms moving at 10 meters per second. And these two cars are going to collide, and when they collide, they're actually going to stick together. They're going to stick together, and they're going to move off at some angle up in this direction. And what we'd like to do is really find out what the angle is that they move together. Um, and that's going to have some important ramifications for us. Now, one of the things that's important with momentum conservation is that momentum is not actually conserved completely. It's conserved in each dimension at, at the same time. So we have to take the x and the y a little separately. So first of all, in the x dimension, we're going to do our momentum equation. And the momentum equation is m1 v1 plus m2 v2 equals m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime. And if we take the pieces here, we only look at the things that move in the x direction. And there's only one thing that moves in the x direction. The only thing that moves there is this car right here. <laughs> this car is the only one moving. This one's moving, but it's not moving in the x dimension. It's moving in the y dimension. So I'm going to put all the pieces in here. I'll say 2,000 kilograms multiplied by the speed, 35 meters per second. Plus, I'm going to include this one because it's part of the problem, but it doesn't have any velocity in that dimension. So I'm going to say 1,500 kilograms multiplied by 10 meters per second. And then afterwards, they're going to stick together. These two cars are going to stick together. And I'll say that we have 2,000 kilograms times some v that we don't know, plus 1,500 kilograms times some v that we also don't know. When you do this out, <coughs> We've actually made a small mistake here. This should be zero meters per second here. When you do this out, what you get is 2,000 times 35. We're going to leave the units off for now. Which equals, this is zero, because we don't put that in there, 3,500 times V. And if you do a little bit of canceling here, you can divide by 100 and cancel out those zeros. You can divide by 35 and cancel this out. And what you find is that the velocity is 20 meters per second. So that means in the x dimension, after they collide, they're going 20 meters per second. Here we had 35 meters per second, but now because you increased the mass, because you got hit by something else, now you're at 20 meters per second. We can do the same thing in the y dimension. In the y dimension here, we use the same equation, but now some of the pieces are different. It's going to be 2,000 kilograms, but now this one is not moving in the y dimension. And then we have 1,500 kilograms, <coughs> and that's moving in the x or in the y dimension at 10 meters per second. And we're going to get the same thing over here. We don't know how fast they're moving afterwards. We have 2,000 kilograms times V plus 1,500 kilograms times V. When we put this together, when we put it together here, we get 1,500 times 10 is 15,000 equals now 3,500 V. So when we solve this one, when we solve this one here, we get a little bit of canceling from the zeros there. And then we get 150 divided by 35. 150 divided by 35, which is the same, by the way, as 5 times 30 divided by 5 times 7. We cancel the fives, and you get 30 divided by 7. 
30 divided by 7 is 4.28. So, what we have when these two cars collide, we have a velocity of 20 in the x dimension and a velocity of 4.28 in the y, which means we can combine these back again. When we combine these back again, we have a velocity of 20 here, and we have a velocity of 4.28 here. What we can do is we can find the inverse tangent of this. We can find the inverse tangent to find out what this angle is. And that's really what the important part here. We're going to find out what this angle is. The inverse tangent of this is going to be 4.28 divided by 20. And if you put that in your calculator, what you'll find out is that it's about 12 degrees. So when these two cars collide, what's going to happen is they're going to collide, stick together and hit, and the angle that they move off in will be about 12 degrees.